Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I want to show you how to overclock your Raspberry Pi 3. Now I did a previous video a while ago on overclocking your CPU. In this video we're going to go over overclocking your CPU, your GPU, and your SD RAM. It's very simple to do. Before we get started, a word of warning here. Now, best thing to do is back up your stock config in case something goes wrong. We can replace the config and everything will be back at stock. You need proper cooling on your Raspberry Pi 3 if you're going to overclock. It gets hot enough the way it sits. Overclocking it is only going to generate more heat. And finally, you're going to need a good power supply. What I did was I created a text file that you can download in the description. This will tell you exactly how to overclock. And I have a few overclock profiles. I also go over the cooling I use, which is the Flirt case, and the power supply I use. I've left Amazon links for you. Do not try this without a heatsink and a fan or a Flirt case. The Flirt case is all aluminum and the case itself sits on top of the CPU. It's a passive cooling solution, so you don't need a fan and it works perfectly. Power supply is important. You need at least 2.5 amps. When we're going up, I definitely suggest go ahead and grab a three amp quality power supply for your Raspberry Pi 3. There are links here and I'll leave the links in the description also. Today, I'll be demonstrating how to overclock RetroPie 4.1. This will work with Raspbian and several other Debian-based OSs for the Raspberry Pi. So the easiest way to achieve this overclock is to take your flashed SD card out of your Pi, place it in your Windows PC, and find the config file on the SD card. Now you can do this all on the Raspberry Pi, but for normal users, this is going to be the easiest way to do it. So this is my SD card that I have RetroPie 4.1 on. Here's my config file. Before you get started, I definitely recommend downloading Notepad++. Notepad++, in my opinion, is the best text editor for your Windows machine. It numbers everything for us, and it's just easier to navigate. So download this. There's no malware, there's no spyware. It's free to use, easy to install, and very small. We have a 32-bit and a 64-bit. Next thing, I'm gonna leave a link to the RetroPie Wiki overclocking page. Read through this. This tells you everything you need to know. Power supplies, heat sinks, everything. So now that we have Notepad++ installed and we have our SD card in our PC, we need to locate our SD card. Mine is drive E, it's named boot. Open it up, we'll find config, text document, right click, open with notepad++. I'm going to take it over to the side here. So if you're using notepad++, scroll down to line 42. Uncomment to overclock the ARM, 700 megahertz is the default. Hashtag ARM underscore frequency equals 800. This is what we're going to be replacing with our overclock profile. So in the description of this video, you can download this text file here. I created it. Read through it. Make sure you understand what you're doing. You need good cooling and you need a good power supply. We're going to scroll down. And I have set up a few overclock profiles. The top one here is actually ripped directly from RetroPie's website. This is a 1300 megahertz overclock, 500 megahertz on the GPU, and 500 megahertz on the SD RAM. Now by overclocking your Raspberry Pi, you will not be able to play every Nintendo 64 game at full speed. You will not be able to play every Dreamcast game at full speed. You will not be able to play every PSP game at full speed. Even though we overclock our Raspberry Pi, it's not much, and the Pi is already underpowered the way it sits. So if you're just starting out, I definitely recommend the base overclock of 1300 megahertz. We got GPU frequency of 500 and an SD RAM frequency of 500. This should work on 90% of all Pis. Now there is a chance you won't be able to overclock your Raspberry Pi at all. And the reason being is not all CPUs are created equal. 
Sometimes you get a good one, sometimes you get a crappy one that just will not handle an overclock. Let's get started overclocking. It's very simple to do. I do recommend going to the top of your Notepad++ on your config file and saving this. We're going to back it up. So we'll go to File, Save As, Desktop, Config, Save. Now we have a backed up config file on our desktop here. If anything goes wrong, you can always transfer this back to your SD card. So at line 43, we're going to want to replace this. So I've set up a few overclock profiles here. This is the text document you can download from my Dropbox. We have 1.3, 1.35, 1.4, and the no f given overclock here, which is 1.5 gigahertz. This will not even work on 1% of the Raspberry Pi 3s out in the world right now. You might be one of the lucky few people who have a Pi that is able to overclock this high. I do recommend turning your fan on full speed and get a big ass heat sink because this is going to get your Pi pretty hot. So for the normal user, 1.3 gigahertz, GPU will be set at 500 and the SD RAM will be set at 500. This should work on 80% of the Raspberry Pis out in the world. If your Pi does not boot, you can just take that backed up config file, place it back on your SD card, and you'll be good to go. I'm going to go with the base overclock of 1.35, GPU 500, SD RAM at 500 megahertz. So I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to go right over here, highlight the hashtag arm underscore frequency equals 800, and replace it. The best way to stop the overclock is to replace it with the arm frequency equals 800. So if you don't want it overclocked anymore, you'll go over here, copy this, paste, and your overclock will be stopped. Or use your backed up config file and replace it. I'm going to go with the 1.35 gigahertz, paste. File, save. You're done. When you put this back into your Raspberry Pi, you will be overclocked to 1.35 gigahertz. If it does not boot, you need to move down in the overclock. So go back to the 1300 megahertz. If it still doesn't boot, you need to bring it all the way back to stock. Some Pis just will not overclock. Now I'm going to be moving to the Raspberry Pi. I'm running RetroPie 4.1 and just show you that my unit still boots up. And I'm also going to show you how to find out if your Pi is truly overclocked. Let's move over to the Pi now. Okay, so I'm now running my Raspberry Pi 3 at 1.35 gigahertz. My GPU is at 500 megahertz and my SD RAM is at 500 megahertz. Now the only way to test if the overclock was successful this is the only way that I know how, is to make sure you save the correct config file on your SD card. Or when we boot up, we can connect a keyboard and press F4. At the end of the text file that you downloaded from my Dropbox, I will leave this for you. It's very simple. We're gonna check the max frequency of the CPU. Cat space forward slash SYS for system. Devices forward slash system, forward slash CPU, forward slash CPU zero, forward slash CPU FREQ, forward slash scaling, underscore max for max frequency, underscore FREQ, press enter. So as you can see, when I press enter, it returned a number. That's 1.35 gigahertz. That's the max my CPU is going to run at. If it returns a number, 1200000, then you did not save the file correctly on your SD card. I've run into this before. With Notepad++, you need to make sure you're saving the correct file on your SD card. This command here is at the very bottom of the text file that you downloaded. This will allow you to check that your Pi is properly overclocked. As you can see, I'm at 1.35 gigahertz. 
But that's it for now, guys. I really appreciate you watching. If you could, hit that like button and subscribe. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll leave links to some cases that are really good, some Amazon links down below, my text file link, and a link to the RetroPie Wiki Overclock page. Like always, thanks for watching.